What's going on guys? Knights here with a tips guide video and today I'm going to be sharing some secrets that I've picked up in my time playing this game. Now there are a few veteran players that might know about a few of these tricks but I assure you guys nobody knows every one of these things that I'm going to be sharing with you so if you stick around I'm sure something will be of some use to you. So starting off I'm going to just be running through my like graphic settings and various uh, just like performance settings I guess you could say so first off um, head bob intensity you want to turn that off and then ragdoll limit and ragdoll stay time this is basically the amount of dead bodies whether it's horses or warriors whatever um, this is the amount that they can stack up to so if you have 20 it will keep stacking bodies until there are 20 dead people unless you do like zero seconds then they'll vanish instantly so basically i keep mine around like four to eight somewhere in that range not too heavy like i think it's kind of funny to see the dead bodies sometimes and like they're ragdolling and stuff but um if you can keep it down to like you know five five ragdolls and if at, at under under 10 seconds for sure now a lot of top players play zero and like zero so if they kill somebody they instantly disappear so if your computer's having a hard time running this game, definitely turn both of these to zero, but um, mine's mine's fine, so I can I can run those. Uh, mouse smoothing, turn that off. It's going to make you less consistent with your strikes. And then uh, as for this, this is irrelevant. So I'm going to jump over to my video settings because a lot of you guys have been asking. Um, field of view 101, absolutely, and. I try to run in uh, 1920 by 1080. So I use temporal AA, medium textures. I can't handle too low. I, I like my game to look decent. Effects quality low. Now this is just for me. I have a 1070 Ti with uh, i5 8700K. So kind of middle end computer. I would imagine most of you guys have something roughly around this, maybe a little better, a little worse. So this might work for you. You might have to tone it up or down a little bit depending on your liking. So yeah, texture quality, medium, effect quality, low, shadow quality. Um, I would play low, but they just show up as like cubes and it's just too darn ugly for me. Um, so yeah, try that out. But I really don't like having terrible. I'd rather there be an off. I, I think they should add a shadows off selection. That would I would definitely choose that as opposed to this low because it just makes it look hideous. Uh, indirect shadows off. View distance medium. Now, if this is a shooter, you always want to go ultra. Um, but since it's a sword game, unless you're playing archer, if you're playing archer, you could play like high or ultra if your computer can handle it. But if you're playing sword, like it really doesn't change much. And again, as it says, it's mostly for foliage. Uh, post processing quality low, foliage density medium. Again, I can't handle it too low. I don't want the game to look like total trash. Character quality high. This is like one of the only things I like to have high. Uh, no cloth. This will help your CPU as well. Uh, ragdoll quality low. Space screen reflections low. Bloom off. Motion blur off. Ambient occlusion off. Lens flares off. All right, you guys. So I hope that sums it up for the video settings. Now, these are just my personal preferences. You might find lower or higher settings will work out for you. But a lot of you guys have been asking me. So next, let's take a look at the keybinds. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the bottom. Now, this is going to help you guys flourish by pressing any button once. So I want you guys to take whatever button you use to flourish and hit delete on the first option here under choose one. Now, press the button that you use flourish for. OK, so whatever you have keybinded to flourish, put it under choose one. And then put the secondary as number one. Now, whatever you use down here at emote menu. Now, it says hyphen. I don't want this to confuse you guys. This is my front DPI button. Now, I have this key binded in my mouse app to look like a hyphen. But it really could be key binded to anything. It could be key binded to X. It could be key binded to a thumb button. Whatever it be. So don't let this hyphen confuse you. This is my open emote menu button, okay? So I want you to keep that in the opening slot. And then in the secondary slot, put the button that you normally 
press, press to use flourish. So as you can see, under choose one, have the flourish button and under show emote menu on the secondary, have the flourish button as well with your open menu and one there. Therefore, you can still select one without it throwing you off. If you want to use the voice menu, you can still press one to do your uh, standard commands. So once you've done this, if I press cap locks, this is my flourish button. I flourish in one button. Like you just press it once and you flourish. And then for a trick I will show you later, which is a no stam drain faint trick. Uh, you basically just press the emote button. So my front DPI, normally this would be X, I believe. So, but in my case, I press the front DPI to raise my weapon and then I hit cap locks to flourish so I can raise my weapon to make it look like an overhead strike and then I can flourish to cancel it early uh, or I can just press it um, just press it once so I raise my weapon and and let it go through its emote cycle all right you guys I hope that helped also I wanted to quickly mention in case you guys were unaware that leg armor actually enables you to sprint faster than having chest armor of the equivalent level along with the head armor so as you can see if you look at these bars down here the leg armor affects your sprint speed in a way that it's more viable than just covering your legs it actually makes you faster than having the equivalent chest and torso so that's why i've been running level two leg armor as opposed to like 331 or 231 I've been just doing 222 two, two, or 232, two, that kind of loadout. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Keep in mind that leg armor is very much so viable right now, considering they just got their damage buff. So watch out for your legs. And that's just a quick tip that most of you might know, but I just wanted to remind you it's, it's something to take into consideration. So this is my first secret tip. And as I showed you guys in the keybinds, the raise weapon, all you have to do is press open emote menu, your flourish button, and it will automatically raise the weapon. And then if you press flourish again, it will flourish after and cancel this raise weapon early. So as you can see, I'm kind of leaning forward and backward to try to sell it. And now this is just a demo in third person, so you can see what it looks like. And this works best with one-handed weapons, like the one-handed messer or bastard sword one-handed um so if you're in like tight quarters and you want to one-hand your weapon this is really good and again this is zero stamina cost whatsoever now this is kind of to replace the overhead feint and again this will not work that well against really good players but if you got them really weak and they're kind of concerned you can get them to parry quite often as well as it works fairly frequently against low level players so as you can see here, I'm using the Bardiche. Now it works all right with the Bardiche because its animations are fairly slow. So see how I get this guy weak. He's on the back foot and it worked on him because of that. And same with this guy. He's an archer. He just switched out to his sword. He's expecting a hit. And that's a good time to use this when they're already expecting a hit. Now this guy, the scoundrel guy, I can tell he's probably a noob. He's playing a default scoundrel. So I don't even cancel it with the flourish. I just follow through the motion. And as you can see, I'm using the one-handed messer and it works really well with that. All right, you guys, so going on to tip number two, and that is do not underestimate the Pavish shield. Now, there's a few hidden secrets in here that you may not know about. And that is anytime you go to a crate, you can replenish a brand new Pavish shield. And from what I've found, there is no limit to them. Now, if there is, it's probably around the six to 10 shield limit. So you can keep spawning these things. And as you see here, you don't have to cut off entire regions. You can kind of just use it to cut off various choke points and force them. And as you can see, my teammate here has used it to his advantage. He's very happy about my structures I've set up. And it's protecting us against these archers here. Now, I don't typically play like this, but I'm doing it for the content's sake. So you guys can see the potential behind these things. There's It adds a whole nother layer of play style. 
and this Pavis shield also was reduced from two point cost down to one. So I use this with a bandage quite frequently along with the friendly perk. These are my other kind of tips for frontline. I think the bandage could easily be two points. And I think the Pavis shield is worth one and a half points. Now, obviously there's no half points in the game, but I'm just telling you what I think the value of them really is. Along with the friendly perk, which costs one point, and I think it's worth probably two points, if not at least one and a half points, you're likely gonna get roughly five points of value out of three point cost. So those are the three things I recommend using in Frontline. I use it on 90% of my classes. Aside from the Pavis Shield, this is something that I kind of swap out depending on what playstyle I'm using. But as you can see, I'm double barriering this walkway here because it's really the only place where they're able to kind of swing at and cut it down. So you can get creative. As you can also see the engineer here, it inspired him to kind of support me here with some spikes. And this is another way you can use it. You can drop it down before getting hit. And as you can see, it totally saved my life there. As well as this clip here, I am already below half health or around half health and I can drop it down use it as cover this man comes up at me and and does not know what to do so it bought me that extra time and homeboy here came over from behind and managed to decapitate him so this is just generally good archer cover anytime you need a bandage or if you don't even use bandages it makes it way easier to passively heal so you can use tenacious or just standard healing it will make it a lot better also a lot of time when you're bandage healing it doesn't get you to full so if you want to completely top off i recommend just hiding behind that last portion i also wanted to quickly mention that you can repost projectiles in case you didn't know and this is something that a lot of people probably know about but i just wanted to mention it in case you didn't know that as well as horses being able to regen your stamina 10 stamina per hit and this is actually quite useful for if you're getting surrounded and you manage to just hit it once or if you're dueling somebody and there's a horse nearby and he's chasing you down. All you got to do is hit the horse and you will get the leg up on him. So those are my secret tips on how to improve your play, save health, save stamina, and all around just kind of explore various possibilities and how you can utilize the mechanics of the game. So I really appreciate you guys sticking around for this video, and I look forward to catching you in the next one.